Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis on Monday, August 18th, 2014. This is a daily chart of the SPY. And just as I've been telling you in these previous videos, we came into and through 197. Um, I actually am a little surprised today that we got as high as we did. However, um, all in all, it was expected that we were going to get to 197. And, um, you know, there's probably some more upside to be had. And here's, here's what's going on. You have the uh, Jackson Hole Wyoming meeting tonight, or I'm sorry, this week, with all the central bankers from around the world. They meet in Jackson Hole, all the, the top economists and, and central bankers and all these guys and gals. And, and they're going to come up with some revolutionary new concept of nothing. So, but, but nevertheless, there's going to be a lot of speculation, hype, and everything in between leading up to and through the meeting, which I think lasts from like Wednesday through the remainder of the week. So, all in all, you might see a little whippy action in the middle to the end of the week, but I don't believe that you're going to see any substantial down move this week whatsoever. You might just float around for the next day or so because leading into the meeting Tuesday and Wednesday, you probably won't get a lot of news flow and, um, and you're getting into the what's quote unquote called dog days of summer, late August before the Labor Day weekend, like I've been discussing. So, um, your best bet for some increased volatility, maybe a down move, maybe next week, but um, most probably the heavier side will be uh, <clears throat> after the Labor Day weekend, which is going to be after September 1. I think Labor Day falls on September 1 uh, this year. So all in all, today what you had, I'll go to the, the hourly chart just to show you what you had today. Pretty simple stuff. Um, you basically uh, opened up. Here we are. You opened up. And you basically float it around all day long. Don't, this long tail here is, uh, that's a misprint. That's nothing. So, um, basically that's it. I mean, it was just an, an up move at the open. The market was up overnight, pre market. The S&P was up when I woke up this morning. Uh, I think the uh, S&P E mini was up about, uh, six points, maybe seven points, something like that. And, uh, and it just kept going all day. It's, uh, you know, I guess you can call that a gap and go. So um, there's your S&P today. So not much. It was kind of boring, if you if you will, in terms of uh, it was kind of quiet all day long. The volume was relatively light, except like the very end of the day, some volume came in. I don't know where it came from. But that was it. It was an up move and then a sideways action all day and nothing more. And, and the sideways could lead to more upside tomorrow. So beware of that. Um, other than select stocks here and there, uh, probably not a good shortable market this week. Um, so just be careful. You probably get a lot of light volume this week and a lot of float upward. So my, my bias would be the upside this week. Let's move over to the gold market. And, uh, let's go back to the daily chart of the gold market. This is GLD. More of the same, nothing going on, uh, just not ready yet in terms of uh, convergence of time and price. So uh, if you want another price, uh, I'm kind of look, I'm leaning towards a break of 123, uh, maybe down to this gap fill on the worst side of 122 and a half. Um, that's kind of in the neighborhood uh, that I would look to start to pick up some gold, but um, I don't think that's going to happen for a few days. So we'll just keep our eye on it and... Um, the other thing to keep an eye on, which is a better looking chart altogether, is uh, GDX, which is the gold miners. And if you look at this, this is you know really setting up for a nice up move. It's above all the moving averages. It's been going sideways for a long time. And if you look at the uh, weekly chart, the you you have this beautiful inverse head and shoulders where the line comes down here, and you're above the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders here. So as long as this keeps consolidating, uh, you're setting up for a nice up move. Uh, again, time and price, time and price, time and price. Uh, how about the VIX? And we're going to talk about interest rates. Um, the VIX came down again, and this is a weekly chart. Now you've had 
two plus a third week starting today of a, of a move in the VIX lower. So I would think that being the light volume and lack of downside pressure, in my opinion, this week, um, my my guess is you would probably get you you could get as much as a dollar lower in the VIX, uh, maybe eleven fifty something like that. So you know you can look to uh, pick up some uh, calls on the VIX if you play uh, if you play stuff that way when it gets down to that level. And if you go out a couple of months, you should be rewarded because if you just look every time it gets that low, it pops back up at some point, right? So uh, it's a pretty good risk reward to pick up the VIX down in this low here and this level here. And if you go out a couple of months, you should be rewarded. So that's a little um, little trade for the masses. Uh, good luck with that one. I think it's a good idea. Now let's move over to the interest rate market. I'm going to bring up the yield on the 10-year Treasury note. And as we discussed last week, look at the weekly chart. We really kind of collapsed down on this thing. And we came below the 200-period moving average, 200-week moving average, which in my mind is pretty significant. So we bounced up to it today. And uh, this this is probably setting up to go lower. So you need to be careful on the... Uh, on the yields going lower, which uh, may work out to put downward pressure on the market. Stocks go down, bonds go up, yields go lower. That seems to be uh, at least telegraphing that may be the case, unless we get the opposite, unless we get low yields going into a stock market reversal and yields go up and the market comes down, which is even doubly bad for the market because the cost of money goes up. Therefore, everything that happens costs more, which puts pressure on earnings across the board. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to see how this plays out. But we're just reading the numbers. We're reading the charts. And we let the charts tell us what to do. We don't impose our will on the charts, right? And that's where we are now with yield. So that's a weekly chart of the 10-year. Let's go back to the daily. It's just ugly. It's just in a downtrend. It's that simple. There's just, you know, you don't know where the bottom is, so you don't try and pick it. Uh, you'll find that eventually you'll get a signal that the bottom is in, but it's not here yet. So uh, that's what we're looking for. So I guess the last comment on yields is uh, they may be susceptible to some wide-ranging moves around the uh, Jackson Hole Wyoming meeting with all the central bankers uh, because they will be talking about the economy, they will be talking about interest rates, and they will be talking about the taper, and they'll talk about uh, the global economy and synchronization and all that stuff. And when they start to talk about all that, uh, a lot of speculation follows. And when a lot of speculation follows, uh, movements can follow in the interest rate market, this in particular. So you look for some up and down moves in the interest rate market throughout the latter part of this week. Uh, so I think that's something to keep your eye on. Can't tell you exactly which way they're going to move. It depends on A, what they say, and B, how it's interpreted. It's more important how it's interpreted. It's not really what they say. It's what the market thinks they said. All right. Anyway, um, that's going to be a wrap for tonight. Uh, I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in, folks. It was another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.